All the best. It's quite a challenge. Woozy, I find a balance. Drink it with my lawyer heads. Quick piercing on a Tuesday. No big deal. So in the spirit of pilot season, I've decided to do a reveal video of my worst headshots and uh, kind of explain what I did wrong. As actors, we all know why we need headshots. It's literally a photo of our head. We need to give something to casting because it's the first thing that they're gonna see before you audition. It also is super helpful in getting agents. I will say though, honestly, I've had my fair share of like terrible headshots and not a single time was it the photographer's fault. Every single time it was my own fault. And I'm gonna let you know why. I bought a bra. $20 off a $50 purchase. Ooh la la. I think I'm gonna have to go back. So I bought a bra, my first bra, my first real bra in four years. And it's not for me. It's very boring. It is for a wardrobe fitting because I booked my first commercial. And it actually ties into this video. So welcome back to my channel. My name is Courtney, you can call me Quartz and I feel like I've learned a lot of valuable lessons from all of the headshot mistakes that I have made as a green actor. Before I dive on into it, I really want to share something that has been a valuable tool to me in, in my early days as an actor, and that is by someone you all know and love, Miss Jenna Fisher. So if you don't recognize her name, she is Pam from The Office, and she wrote this really great book, The Actor's Life. It's literally a survival guide, and she covers everything in this book from headshots, to getting an agency, to getting into the union, to booking your first gig, to going to your first wardrobe fitting, which is why I referenced it today because I had, I had to go and get a bra for my first wardrobe fitting. Like I don't have any plain bras. I have one bralette that my friend Catherine got me. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. I skimmed through this book last night because I wanted to touch on some of the headshot pointers that she made that helped me out. I ended up flipping to the section about your first wardrobe fitting and I was like, oh shit, I don't have any bras. I need to go get one. I need to be prepared. This this is an industry investment. So consider this video your little industry investment into yourself and what not to do when going to your first headshot session. Let's just get into the headshot horror stories that I have to share. Okay, so as actors, like I said, we all understand why we need headshots. If you've ever taken an acting class, they usually cover all of the best ways to strategize your headshots, which includes picking characters that you think you might get cast for, wearing outfits that would suggest that character, which is something we call dressing to suggest. I've had teachers and coaches touch on what not to do for a headshot session like don't go overdressed don't go in a full character getup don't the basics but there are some common mistakes that I made that I like to think are the reasons why I didn't get an agent or book any roles for a very long time and the main reason being is that none of my headshots looked like me one thing a lot of agents casting directors coaches will tell you is that you want to look like yourself in your pictures like that is the main thing so when i got my agent and i asked him before my headshot session i was like what is the one thing you want out of these photos his answer was so simple less is best this is what i look like on a daily basis now i tried to recreate this in a way that made me look my best but still myself <laughs> okay so i actually have a facial piercing she's been tucked away but I have my septum done. My septum ring is pierced. Of course, I wanted to be like all the trendy cute hoes out there and get my nose pierced, but I knew as an actor, it's not exactly the wisest choice because not only do you have a piercing that you're gonna have to take in and out or get clear piercings to replace it with, you're also gonna have a literal hole in your face. Whenever you're in your close-up, whenever there's a tight shot, you will be able to see that hole. Very subtle, but it will be there. That is something to be mindful of. Obviously, I would save the face tattoos for when you make your big break. I got my very first headshots done through through Instagram. I was scrolling through Instagram one day and searching headshot photographers in Vancouver. I hadn't even started acting school yet, but I knew I wanted to get some headshots done to submit to the acting school. And I found this very small photographer. He was doing an Instagram contest like, share this photo, tag this many people, you might win free headshot session. He was a photographer, but he wasn't a portrait photographer. He was trying to get his foot in the door and I appreciated that, it was free. And I thought it was great. I thought they were perfect. I thought that would be good enough. And honestly, for my first headshots, they were 
they were okay. Now these, these are great because the essence of me is there. You can tell that's me. It's a younger version of me, but it's me. However, the editing, not so great. I didn't know what to wear. I didn't know how to pose. I didn't do any research beforehand. So they turned out more like cute pictures that your friend took of you. Consider these pretty decent photos, but they don't exactly look professionally done and they don't really look finished, if you know what I mean. Also, the lighting is kind of fluorescent, which reminds me of math class, which makes me wanna not look at the photo. All in all, these were a great start for headshots for someone who was just starting acting school. The next time I went to get headshots, I had just finished acting school and I had done my research. I thought, I'm gonna be the best actor in this city. I'm gonna get the best photographer in this city. I went with this amazing photographer by the name of Carolina Tur. I loved her photography style in a sense of, it was natural lighting, the model, actor, they always look, they looked amazing. And I would suggest booking with someone like, like Carolina if you have the look, like the look. One thing that I was being super mindful of during this photo shoot is that look. I was thinking, okay, I know Vancouver, I know my market, it's CW, it's moody, it's teen dramas, it's edgy, and I really wanted to capture that because I thought I could. But if you look at my face, I am a cherub, I am a child, I am very cute, but I think I would be more prone to booking things like Pam on The Office, where we have this very sweet, innocent, very sellable commercial baby face. I just don't think I should have gone with a photographer who is excellent at capturing those types of characters when I just don't fit that niche. I think the issue was I didn't do my own hair and makeup for these pictures. I went all in. I think I spent $700 on this headshot package. I personally would not suggest booking someone to do your hair and makeup unless you know them and trust them and they do something that you can easily recreate. I had this beautiful makeup look done. I looked amazing. I looked like I was doing a photo shoot, but these are supposed to be headshots. These are supposed to look natural and organic and I could never recreate those photos. I could never look like that. I would never walk into an audition with my hair blown out, my eyebrows on, like I just started getting into makeup this year and I wasn't capable of recreating that. So if I ever did have an audition and people saw my photo and they saw me when I walked in, it just didn't match. But I did recently sign with my agency last May. At first, because we were all in quarantine, I had no choice but to do my own kind of quarantine headshots, which I shot on my iPhone and I tried to use natural light because I knew it was the most flattering. However, I hadn't really thought about headshots in over two or three years. So I didn't take my own advice and I was like posing, like at one point my like hands are like in the picture. I look like I'm like modeling for Instagram, which you're not, you're taking headshots. My agent actually had me redo these uh, a couple times for reasons that they just didn't look like headshots, which is fair, we want them to be acceptable so that casting will actually take you seriously. But they were enough to get my foot into a couple of auditions. But let's get to the cream of the crop, okay? So third, fourth time's the charm. I took my most recent headshots, the headshots that I use today, with an amazing photographer here in Vancouver named Ashley Ross. This time around, I wanted to get it right. I wanted to be taken seriously. I wanted to look like myself. So I did a little bit of extra research. I was looking for someone who used natural light, who had their models look natural. Like I could look at the model, the actor, and recognize them in their other Instagram photos. And I also knew that I wanted to plan my outfits accordingly and dress to suggest in a way that suits my niche. This is super important. I know we all wanna be the lead on Riverdale, but some of us are gonna be the comic relief like that's just how the industry is and it will change eventually but as of right now we have to play into that so that we can get successful when i actually found ashley i was kind of torn between her and another photographer because this other photographer was in the same price range had beautiful photos and i emailed them asking the same questions but the way that ashley responded to me she was so natural and authentic and a little bit funny and I knew that I would vibe with that in person. I just felt like I was emailing a friend. I made sure that I chose someone that I could vibe with so that I would have fun at the photo shoot so that it would be enjoyable so you could see the result in the, in the headshot photos. As you can see, I look natural. I look like myself. I can put my makeup on like that tomorrow if I need to. My hair is the same color. My hair is the same length. 
it's consistent. Consistency is key. You need to be able to look like your photos. I really, I think the strongest advice that I would be able to give my past self is just do your own hair and makeup, choose your own outfit, choose characters that you genuinely, like, be honest, that you genuinely think you'd be cast for. Dress to suggest. Now, dressing to suggest doesn't mean going and dressing as a nurse because you think you'll be cast as a nurse, so you walk into your headshots wearing scrubs. We all know that's that's not how it goes. <laughs> if you think you're gonna get cast as, you know, nurse number three on Grey's Anatomy or whatever, go in in like a nice neutral colored shirt that can suggest you could play that character. Don't really go with the black and white because sometimes it'll wash you out in photos or it'll blend into the background in the photo and then you just look like one walking green screen so pick neutral earthy tones that bring out your eyes your skin suggest certain character archetypes pick a photographer who uses natural light find someone that you vibe with and guaranteed your headshots will turn out it took me five years to get my headshots right like that is a lot if I can leave you guys with any final tip, it would be save for the photographer that you really like. I know it's hard, especially with quarantine and everybody wants to find a budget-friendly photographer, but it's worth it to break the bank a little bit than to end up with someone whose photos are only going to give you a temporary result. Understand what you're selling as an individual, whether you're a commercial actor or a TV film actor, understand where you fit in and what casting might expect from you. As long as you steer clear of the mistakes that I made, which was not choosing a professional, overdoing my hair and makeup, not niching down to my ability, trying to do amateur Instagram photo shoot headshots by yourself, I promise you it'll be worth it to pay for the perfect photographer. As always, my name is Courtney. You can call me Quartz. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, pick out Jenna Fisher's book because it's seriously a survival guide. Like cover to cover read in a couple days. If you are that person who wants to be an actor, who's still living at home with their parents, who's dreaming up ways to get to Hollywood, read this book. It is the most realistic expression of what it's like to start out as an actor that you can get your hands on. So this, this will give you everything you need to know. But if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for joining me. I really tried to make this video a bit more vloggy. Like I want to do more showing instead of just sitting and talking to the camera. So feel free to leave me some suggestions in the comment section below. And uh, if, you, if you have any more questions, feel free to stalk me on Instagram. My socials are in the description. We can become friends. Thanks for checking out this video and I will see you guys next Thursday. Bye!